we're all products of our time. You know, when I started teaching, uh, my mentors, my models, could only deal with the tools they had at their disposal. And so they saw their responsibility as translate the content as directly as possible through a lecture or, or through note, note taking or scripting or drawing in, in, into kids, to, to get it into kids' minds. And, um, and it was a very much a transmissive model. I have become a more of a facilitator of students' knowledge, direction. Uh, there is so much out there, and they're not sure everything that they read is 100% correct, is the right stuff, is it, uh, is it scientific. There's so much opinion, there's so much misuse of knowledge. So my role as a teacher is to guide the students into opening their minds and asking why. So if they see a, st a statistic, who made the study? Who, uh, who commissioned the study? What is the study about? Is the interpretation of statistics the right thing? So I'm always after them to say, if you can graduate from this school, as long as you can answer the question or ask why, then I've, I've achieved my goal. As teachers, the students will walk through our doors eventually, and what allows them to carry on? And if you can allow them to have the skills to let them answer their own questions as they move on, I, I think that that's probably the ba greatest gift that you can give, because you're not always going to be there. And if you always relied on me giving the information, you know, that's not going to cut it when they leave. And you really haven't given them something they can hang on to. And I think technology allows them that when you give them the chance to explore and give them the skills to be able to use it properly. I had students who were um, trying to figure out a way to approach a project. And I kind of threw it back in their court and said, well, they'd never seen a play before. And they weren't theatrically minded by nature. They were skateboarders. And they said, Miss, we got a video of us doing our thing to music on YouTube. Why don't you go in and check it out? So I went in and checked it out. Very professional production. Blew me away. And they just did it with a simple camera. And uh, they, you know, got the editing skills. And uh, it was a wonderful production. So it's a great tool to use. A good example of using YouTube then would be uh, when they had the, uh, the girl in the picture from Vietnam, the girl that was uh, burnt with the American napalm. I was able to, in my history class, they were asking who it was because we were selecting students to go to, to hear her, uh, the presentation by Miss Puck. And uh, we were able to, to go into YouTube and uh, I got the class around the, the, uh, the computer and we saw YouTube and they were seeing exactly the filming that that picture came from because our kids today are visual. I mean, they're brought up on videos, they're brought up on TV, and they don't read the newspapers. They have no idea what's going on out there, and you've got to, you know, try to find a program to show them that pertains to it, or, you know, a video that talks about the issue that you're talking about, then they can see it. And then oftentimes you'll get comments back from them, I didn't realize it was like that. Or I, I didn't know that before. And that really happened, did it? Oh, yes. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a very valuable tool. With so much information out there, the problem for students is trying to see what's good and what's bad out there. And that's the role of the classroom teacher, to say, for instance, Wikipedia. I don't think a lot of students know that anyone can edit anything in it. So I always tell the students that Wikipedia is a starting point, but not to be used as a reference point. Most encyclopedias are online now. It just makes sense. It just uh, books in the library are not being used, uh, the reference books, because everything else is so more immediate and so more new and, and current on the internet.
Well, my concern is when the technology is used for the very same reasons that you would use paper pencil and that even though you're using expensive, fancy, cool technology, you're actually not getting any benefit or, or you're not actually meeting the outcomes. You're still doing the same knowledge application outcomes, but you're not getting into higher order thinking skills. You're not paying attention to the Bloom's taxonomy or just ways of making students think more deeply about it. So I think the caution is there, but once you look at your curriculum and say, okay, what, how do I get them to think more deeply about this or evaluate this or synthesize this as opposed to just do a little drill and practice on the computer, which is great, but it doesn't really promote higher thinking. So I think you have to, before you even think about technology, you have to make sure that your curriculum right from the beginning and your planning right from the beginning has capability to encourage higher order thinking skills from the beginning and then say, the only way I can do this is to use technology. The only way I can show this is for them to create their own video or for them to create their own cartoons or something that, that you need technology for that you wouldn't be able to use just pen and paper for. The difference for the student between those great chalk diagrams or even my bad whiteboard drawings is that they're real. They, they understand that this is real, that this is what's happening either yesterday or this is the forecast for tomorrow or this is a live shot. This is live for, or the latest image from the Hubble telescope or the latest image from the GO satellite. This is, this is now, this is real, this is real time. This is the next best thing to actually being in a hurricane being in a thunderstorm. These, this, is, this is as close as we can get. This is what it looks like. If you were on the ground where the photographer is, this is what you'd be seeing. When it comes to talking about uh, students, they're so involved in this internet world and they're so comfortable in it and we come in as the teachers and you know, this is not our, uh, our nature whereas they have grown up with it and, and they have an ownership there, almost a place in it. Um, I think once you bring it to that level, then it really becomes a genuine experience for them because they can relate to it not only in their, their school environment and their scholastic studies, but it becomes something that they can bring to uh, their outside world. So, you know, um, they may have a blog, uh, but that may become something that lives outside of the classroom and it's no longer for the sole purpose of evaluation and oh I have to do my blog because the teacher is going to mark it. Uh, it takes on a life of its own and they look forward to it and they enjoy it and it becomes an experience for them outside of academics. So that's something to look forward to as well. There's a couple of critical lessons I think are important and one of them is um, as teachers we should be models. You know, we should reflect the behaviors we, we value. I know, not just the moral behaviors, but the learning behaviors. If we want kids to be curious, if we want kids to be inquiring, if we want kids to, you know, learn how to synthesize, learn how to be critical, uh, to be collaborative, we need to demonstrate those things in front of them. What better way to do that than be a part of the world they're living in, in a sense that they're dealing with technology. So are we.